Uh, I think you are able to see my screen, right? Hello? Uh, yes, we are able to see. Okay, let's uh, discuss. Let's continue the discussion of the data table uh, demo in detail today. So, so far we have seen yesterday just how to create data table and how to insert static data into that. And we have seen how data how to how to print data from the data table. That is what we have seen yesterday. So, to to we continue that one today, right? So, today agenda is like data table how. We have to insert data dynamically. That means that you may be getting data from from the screen, and how we are going to insert data to this like this. For right now, we are assuming and we are storing some values into the variable, and I'm going to insert into the data table. And am I apart from that, how to read data from Excel, and how to write the data from how to write data into the Excel? That is what today we are going to see. That quickly, I'm just going to create. New flow chart data table data insert insert data into Let us construct one data table here. How to construct by using build data table? I'm just going to construct data table. Double click this here. I'm going to the default column and rows. So I'm just simply creating S and O, which will be like integer. I'm just clicking OK. And just press, and here I'm just picking one more column name as team with the string. I'm just picking column name. This should be in page yours. So, what I'm doing here, I'm just creating only table. I'm just creating only schema here. I'm just clicking OK. For this, I just want to create one data student. This should be of type data table, right? Bala, you can mute yourself, Bala. Yeah, thank you. So, data table. So, system dot data table. I'm just doing instantiation for this. Okay. Now, after building data table, right, we have to give the name for that one. How we have to give? In the output, we have to give dt student. Now we have a one schema which contains the name of that one. Now clear. So what is the next step? So we have to insert data into the data table, right? So let's create variables here. In SNO. In SNO. Here this should be integer and just give default value 100. Yes name. str name. This should be like give something like uh, okay. And just create one more variable called int fee. So this should be an integer. 
just give them a moment on that. Okay. Now we have done the declaration on initialization. So there are basically right. I just want to. What I want to do, I want to add data into the data table, right? So we have an activity called add data row, which is going to deal with adding data into the data table. So basically, there are two ways to enter data into the data table. The one is array row, and next one is data row. So let us go with first of all array row. I'm just clicking here. You just pass the list of array values here. So array is nothing but what? Here, so what is the first column? Int S and O. So what is the second column? Str. Okay. Str name. Then what is it? Int. Click OK. The variable part. Here we have to pass the just variable. So let's take example this n s in s n o name p. This one you may be getting the data from the from different web pages or different uh, Excel sheet, whatever it is. So from there, if you want to push it into this one, so make sure that we have to declare the variable where we have to assign the values. So that is what I have done here for time being. So we'll see an example how to read the data from the. I mean to say that from um, Windows application, how we are going to push it in the table. So that we'll see when, once we start with selectors and other stuff. So this is the basic stuff, how we have to enter the data into the data row. Now we here, so it is showing error, why? So we have to pass one more thing called to which data table is sent in data. So here, the student. So, I just want to convert to an uh, data table to string, right? So for that str out for so let it be declared. Okay, that's it. Now I just want to print the data from the data table. How we are going to print? So we're using output data table concept. So let's click here. And what is the data table you are print? This is student. And what is the text where you want to store the converted thing? Str output. Now, that's all about this program. Let's print this by using right line or log message or in the message box. So now this is str output. If we save this and run it. Here we go. So we have declared only what? SNO NAS name C. So while designing my data table, which contain only column value, that's all. So we don't have we only have column, but we don't have data. This data I have inserted dynamically. So we're using add data row concept here. So like right now I have inserted only one row. If you want to insert multiple rows, so what we have to do. We have to put it in the loop, for loop, or do while loop. So we have to put it in the do while or while loop to push data into. So multiple, multiple. I'm going to say that if you want to insert ten records, yes, I can insert ten records. So based on the condition, I'm going to push data into the data table. So any queries here? So for data array, array row, there are two types of. There are two ways to insert data into this. So one is array row, the second one is data row. So we have seen array row concept. 
So we will see next example data row. For this example, do you have any queries? Bala on Yeah, um, one, uh, um, see, you have to, you have picked up four, uh, four components, right? Uh, for the data array model. Uh, yeah. The first one is built data table. So when you picked up that, you create one table for which there you define number of column names, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the, the table is ready in the uh, built data table part. And then coming to the add date data row, uh, here you supply the value, right? Add data row, you supply the value. Yeah. Right? For which you 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 define the value uh, for each column you define in the built data table part, right? Yes, exactly. And 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 then output data table. Uh, again, you are uh, uh, trying to I mean you are trying to output the value you have in the table. So to output the value, you need a separate uh, kind of variable or uh, how the output comes. Uh, yeah, this is a variable only. Yeah. Separate vari variable you need, right? So this is the data table which we are passing as an input. This okay. is going to convert into the text. So this text is going to push it into the SDR output, which have been declared here. You could see here. Here we go. So we have declared here. So I'm just going to push that value into this one. So finally, I'm printing this SDR output. So this is going so, to come up in the okay, so what? Okay, so uh, what is my understanding is you create the table, uh, you create the data table, you define all what are the columns you required, the first component, and then uh, you define the values to the uh, uh, columns for which you need one variable to which you are supplying the values, right? Yes. And yeah. then to display the value, you need one more uh, kind of output uh, variable, one value, one variable through which you are displaying the value, you are yes. output the value one by one. And yeah. then again to pre, to write the to write the value in the log path, I mean in the output path, you need one more value. So every every action you need one variable through which you are performing your actions, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So there is a based okay. on our requirement as well. Okay. No, I'm just trying to understand the basic functionality because uh, yes, yes. If you look at the normal database, uh, you know, insert, uh, we once created the table, insert a value into the table. We don't use any separate uh, variable to insert the value. Yes, yes, yes. We, but here, for every action, you create one separate variable through which you are performing that action, whether it is inputting the value or outputting the value. Right. Right. So yes. here, I don't require even for static, for example, right here we don't require the variable also. You can even directly hard code the values, but that is not a good practice. Okay, oh, yes, we yes. always want to declare the variable. See, always which we are not going to insert the static values, right? So always is going to be very. See, if you put it in the loop, right? Let's say example, you're extracting ten records from any web page or a Windows application. So I should not hard code it here. So make sure that for each and every one loop, right? So it should be different values are coming in, say, coming in from the web page, right? So that then what will happen? I have declared the values, and I want to keep on overriding the existing values, and I can print it here. That's all. Okay. That we will see. That I'll give an example. We'll automate one small. Uh, what I'm trying to say, web application, Windows application, where we'll see in detail. Fine. Okay. So that's all right. So I'll move on to the next. Uh, yeah, Bala. Yeah, uh, can you click uh, data table control? Sorry. Hmm? But uh, data table, data table, data table control. Okay. Okay. okay, can you click uh, add data room? Variables are variables. Okay. 
ఆ నెక్స్ట్ ఉంటుంది అవుట్పుట్ ఉంటుంది let me create so one more flow chart how to insert data so we're using data row concepts same example i'm just going to do this quickly i'm just going to copy this and i'm going to paste it here so set a start node so obviously it is going to set the start node here let me create the variables so what is that so dt student this is going to be like a uh, sub data table so here i'm just doing instantiation now sorry now we are clear about this now what is the next step so next step is add data row concept so before add data row right? So what is the concept which we have to here i have to declare data row so uh, uh, morgan one question here yeah. so the yeah. first one you 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 are trying to create one uh, data table and that means one table yeah. uh, but it looks like you didn't define the column names right here yeah? no i just different i just copied from previous example right see i'll leave it now okay mm. okay only the the name you changed huh? for that table name you changed no nothing the same name dt student i have given here also it would be dt dt student only right so dt student dt student i'm not changing yeah, anything all, yeah in the previous slide you already defined dt student is the name of the table right yeah. you just copied and put it over here again it looks like you created uh, the table name again it looks like you created is it so or... yeah 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 this is a fresh program right this is a new new flow chart i am not using existing flow chart i am not working on in this flow chart right so when i go back to the when i go back to the next one right so make sure that i have to declare this is a fresh program where i have to declare again the same 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 thing like variables and uh, build a table concept okay okay uh -huh. yeah now so what is that here i want to declare one data row so data row where it is coming from this is also coming from system dot data dot data row so i'm just clicking this and come back to here assign row first of uh, all uh, mohan uh, sorry to interrupt um if you don't bother can you pause for 2 seconds i'll back sorry say it again just if you don't bother can you pause it for 2 seconds just i'll uh, back uh, okay
now this row object i mean instance is going to push it into data row now next step is assign to this dr data row of okay i am defining the columns here so what is the column the first column is s and o here you can define the values under the next thing is dr of so what is the next column so a row of so next column name is name here you can pass a value like student name and assign it so what is the next one dr of c right yes here we can define in some amount so now we have we have pushed data into the data row so here i have declared one data row so this data row should be not it should be you no know, new row of this dt student in this new row i am inserting the values so dr of what is the column name s and o i am injecting dr row the data row of name value data row of fee value so what is the next step so add data row concept so add data row so drag and drop the add data row concept so here you just pass so data row alone so what is the data row so dr row click okay and what is the data table name so data table name is dt student so this row is going to push it into this table as a data row so previously we have seen array row concept and now we are seeing data row concepts so drag get the connection between these two so remaining part and all same so what is that if you want to print data from the data table so for you can print it so by using output data table here you just pass so what is that dt student so what is output so str so if you press control k on the fly we can create so variables so obviously what will happen if you open and see here variable just your output might have been should have been created here so what is the next step i just want to print the data from the data table for see whether the data is printing or out printing perfectly or not so what is this str output so very simple steps i have done i'm just repeating the same now here i'm declaring one i'm building one data table so which doesn't have the data and i have given the name for this data table called dt student and come back to here so i have declared one data row for that so i'm just defining a new row from this data student now i have a row, row got created so in this row right so what i'm doing i'm inserting the values dr of how you are insert the data so dr of column name dr of column name like this so i insert the data into the data row finally this add data row i mean this row right i'm just going to push it into add data row activity here i'm just passing what is the data row that's all i'm just passing dr row which contain entire information about the first row now in which table you are inserting this 
and setting DT student. So finally, by using output data table, I'm printing data from this data, I mean, um, data table. Quickly save this and run it. Here we go. Any queries? No. Okay. So, so every so yeah, so, I mean, uh, um, the, the 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 intention is to define the value into the uh, data table, but. In between, there are so many, you know, uh, kind of uh, tools required uh, to first define, create the row, and then using that uh, creation of row, we are supplying the value, and then once value is supplied, and then we have to uh, output the row, and then, uh, I mean, for adding one more uh, a tool is creating, through which we are adding one more row, one more, uh, I mean, uh, again, value into the, Add row again, output. Hmm. Okay. See, this this two is not a managed always in real time, mm -hmm. right? Output data table is not a managed. It just we are ensuring that whether data is printing from this data table or not. That is what we are ensuring, right? Always we are going to push this one into normally in the log message itself. This mm -hmm. is not always like a mandatory. So this is like, you know, add, add new data row is the mandatory activity, which is going to push data to the, I mean, to say that, um, what I'm trying to say, data table. Okay. So, Mohan, um, is this, this, this uh, online is recordable? Yes, yes, it is recording. So is it possible for you to record and send it back? Because once class is over, we back to our routine work, right? As again, after once we reached office, we are trying to recollect whatever that we learn. By the time we are only having in our mind 20 to 25 percentage of what you have covered up in this session. So we have a recordable, uh, you know, tape or something, a file. We can just rewind, re go through it once or twice. So we'll get more clarity. Also, it help us to. Uh, come back with some of the questions on that next class. Definitely, I'm asking money to share this document. Okay, so is so the recording is default, right? Yeah. So please keep it in your mind. It so should not be shareable. So I'm just. So can I? Can we? Can we ask yeah. money to send the file if it is recorded from the class day one? Yeah, I'm going to ask. Okay. This. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. So that's it for this data table uh, insertion two is now the next is like how to read, read the data from the data table and how we how to uh, what I'm trying to say Excel act let us see a few Excel activities on top of it and we'll move on to this. Morgan, the one uh, the link one you shared um, contains full of uh, contains uh, you know uh, the details of all the components, huh? Yeah, all the activities. Activities, okay. Yeah. So is it a video or a kind of only uh, thesis? No, no, it is only uh, text information. There is no text video. Text information. Part. Okay. Okay. So here, right, uh, we have a few other things like if you want to clear data table, that means that if you want to clear the data from the data table, so what we have to do, let me create a new uh, new sequence data table. Here, right, uh, we have a concept called um, if you want to add the data to particular data column, also we can add it here. So, let me continue the old example. 
if you and add one column right on the fly if you want to add one column just we can able to add one column before inserting row Uh, what do you what do you mean by on the fly? So on the fly in the sense, right? See here, um, first of all, right? I have created like this build data table. But if you want to add again column side, so by using the uh, dynamically, if you want to add any columns to this, so basically, right? Few columns are static few other columns are dynamically we need to add based on our requirement on the fly you got my point okay so the actual on meaning the of on the fly is uh, let's say example so you may have three columns initially but right okay. this so fourth column is like no uh, let's say example uh, what is that it is like a course course you prefer of course is the optional one so for few people for few persons it's the mandatory for few is not a mandatory let's say example just assume that you got my point so okay to make sure that i just want to add on the fly right whoever required i want to add that column and i want to insert into that on the fly right okay so i'm just delete this here add data column so add data column go to the column name so what is the column name here i just given course so in which data table you are inserting so dp student now i am going to insert some values So what is this? PR row of course. So this data column, right? Here type of object. Okay, see here. So here make sure that we have to select the type of object. This should be a string, right? So now I am going to add the values here. Course equals to so what is this? Let's take example MCA has defined it. That's all. Add data column. If we save this and run it. Here we go. So initially, right, I just created how many columns? Three columns, but these codes have been added on the fly. So this is you know uh, for this guy, so I just added one new column. And MCA. So on the fly, I just create a data column by using the add data column concept. I have added one column name here to which data table and type what is the type of that one. So whatever we are when you click on build data table, whatever the options are available, the same options are available when I go ahead with add data column concepts. Clear, right? Yeah. Fine. Now we have a few other things like you now uh, clear data table. So clear data table is to clear the data from the data table. So let's say example, you are um, before output right. It just if you try to clear this, so what will happen? Clear data table. You just pass only data table name along here. So what is this? DT student 
but again you are trying trying to print the value from here so what will happen after clearing right so can we print the data from there i will know right we can't print it if we save this So see the outputs. So what is this? So which we are getting only. So what happened? I'm just clearing the values, right? I'm just going to print only the schema of the data table. So that means that I, I'm clearing the data from the data table. So that is the use of clear data table. So we'll see a few more things like you now. If you want to remove data column, also remove that by using by passing the. So very simple. And just drag and drop here. So what is the remove data column? So just pass the column name and column index as well as column name and column index from the which data table. Let's say example. Now we have added the course, right? I just want to remove this course. What we are going to do this? So what is the column name here? You can pass the column name as course. And here you just what is the data table? DT student. Okay. Now it is just a time being right you just disable this disable activity so instead i can go into add it into okay fine So I just remove the data column on the fly right. I just want to remove one data column. So what is the column name? Either you can pass the column index or you can pass the column name. So quickly save this and run it. See here. I have only three columns along the fourth column which I have added so on the fly I have removed on the fly itself so what will happen so whatever the data which have been whatever the column which have been add uh, add data column that I have removed here so there are any requirements see if you want to remove few data columns on the fly if you want to remove it this is the way which we have to remove the same thing if you want to remove right uh, remove data row we just remove data row is the concept that it is going to remove the data row here we just pass the row index that's all so row index 0 1 like this if you are you can pass the dr row obviously what will happen this is going to be removed here from which they are table that's all but these things most of most probably we may not be used in most of the cases but we have an activities which we are going to utilize this so so far any queries so i'm almost all clear this one, so we'll discuss for each row, it is very, very important. So we'll discuss in the next example. So what I want to do now, I, I just want to create one Excel. Now I'm just creating some data into here. So actually write addition of two numbers so we can do. So here I'll get like input and how to how to read and how to write data into the Excel sheet. So that we'll see some writing and reading. Here, so what is the third column? Sum. Here I'm entering some values.
fine. So I have some data here. Just save this. I'm just creating inside this variable demo here this is addition no I have created one excel sheet now go back to here create new project excel Excel operations. This is very, very important. Yes. Fine. Here, right, let me create one flow chart. Addition using Excel demo. I'm just clicking, I'm just creating this. You type Excel here. So I told you right by default, this Excel activities will not be injected into your activities panel. So what we have to do for this. So before, if you install freshly, right? So what will happen? We have to click to manages. So we have to install uapark.excel.activities. So make sure that we have to install. So then only we can able to access all the activities from this intro. Okay. So this is going to be available by if you click on here available so we just click on the local in the local right so you may find so in the local you have list of what i'm trying to say packages are available so on time on the see here so the database activities the framework already been installed okay so ftp file transfer or if you want to go ahead with the mailing or if you want to go ahead with the pdf concept so we have to be, we have to install all this stuff. So we will we will see one by one in upcoming session. So let us go ahead with only. So what I'm trying to say for time being, Excel operations. Now <clears throat> there are two ways are available. Read I mean to say that we have to read the data from the data table and from Excel sheet. There are two ways. So one is. Here we go, there are two. The one is from workbook and second is from Excel. So what is the differences here? Let us see in detail. Excel, first go, let us go with Excel operations. If you want to deal any Excel operation, so make sure that we have to include Excel application scope. So Excel application scope is like a container where inside that we have to push all the information. So. So what is the first step? So what is the first step here? We have to be include work, workbook path. So where is the workbook path is available now? What I'm trying to say here, and I want to read the data from the Excel sheet. So where is my data is present here? So my data is present in the here addition, right? I'm just drag and drop here. Now, so what is the next step? I have read this. So what is the next step? I want to read range activity. So what is a read range activity? Read range is activity which is going to use read the data from the particular Excel sheet. Here, after reading this, right? So we have to go back to the properties. So make sure that we have to view particular data table. That means that we are reading the data from the addition.xlsx. And finally, we are going to push it into one data table by using it a read range activity. So here, what we have to do, we have to create one data 
one data table variable dt so addition so here this should be an data table <clears throat> so what is the scope the scope should be in addition to the excel and the default one here i just want to create instantiation data table now so what i've done here i just read the data and i want to push it into where you want to push it data table dt addition now what i've done so far so excel application scope if you want to deal with excel excel activity so make sure that you have to include excel application scope only so so on top of it i have to push all the activities inside of this excel application scope excel application scope is like a container where it is going to push all the activities inside of this one <coughs> and now now what i've done so far i have read the data from the data table now if you want to print this so what is the way the same way if you want to see i want to see whether this application scope activity exactly uh, i mean uh, which is going to read the data from the excel sheet or not how we are going to test it so by by using the output data table then come back here output data table the same concept here so what is the data table dt addition so what is that control k your output now just print that value Scope might have changed it for that so obviously so click here variables just here output right Delete this. Here, okay. So that's it. I'm just what I'm doing here by using Excel application scope. I'm just read the data from the particular sheet. So what is the sheet here? Sheet one. So this is a sheet one, right? This Excel Excel. So sheet one, okay. So I'm just reading the. I want to read this data, and finally I want to print. I'm after reading this, this entire rows and column information should be push it into where? Should we push it into data table? That is what read range is showing. Read range output is what? Read range output is data table. That is called. Okay. So we have created one data table here that I have been assigned to here, and. For time being, I'm just removing the hand headers and click save and click run. here so i'm just getting this is my column headers number one number I'm sorry, number one number two sum but why it is throwing a default headers yes so read range activity which is going to throw default column name that is a column zero column one and column and so on okay if we don't want the default headers what we have to do we have to click on the read range and we have to click on the add headers so obviously what will happen here so whatever the default column which is throwing from read range i don't want i need my columns alone that's it quickly save this 
and rerun this flow chart go back to the output here we go this time i'm not getting data from this so for any queries, no more. Good. Now, so now I want to do the operations here, right? So what is the operation you want to do? I want to insert data into the particular. See what I'm doing. I'm reading these two values, and I want to insert here. Right, addition of these two numbers should have been should be inserted into here, right? So let us do that operation now. For so the dictate the variables. Int number one. So this is integer. And now number two. This is also integer. And so what is the next one? Int sum this should be also integer. Now let's double click on Excel application scope. And here what I want to do now what I did so far, I just read the data and what I want to do now for each data row so for each data row is an activity which is used to loop through the data table because i have in what i have a data table here what is the data table dt addition so now what will happen this for each data row each and every time which is going to bring the so which is going to bring one row by row so so what is the first row here so which is going to bring the first row like this. So if I get first row, what I want to do after getting the first row, I want to assign some, I want to read and assign the values, right? So what is the first here? So number one, you want to read the number one, right? First of all, so this, for this I have declared a variable in number one here. So what we have to do, so row of, so column name, what is the column name here? Number one. So which is going to throw an exception, right? So by default, it has come up with the string. So this should be, okay, I'm just picking here for better understanding, dot to string. So before this one, right? So click OK. Still, it is throwing in an error. So, what is the error? Since this is integer, right? This is in the integer. This should be converted into integer again. How we have to create this? Let's go back here. Home convert. So, we have convert dot to int that is to off. Let's all click OK. The same thing I want to do it for number two also, right? The same thing I want to do it for number two also. So int the number two here. What is this? Convert dot to int thirty two in the sense like it is a pro bit processor. If it's thirty two bit processor, so we have to use like this. And here, so what, what is the value? Row of. So what is the column name? So number two. Dot to string.
now i just i just read the values first row first row you will come here from first row i am reading the first value so what is the first value here so one i have stored it into number one integer number one variable and read this number two value and i have stored it into one more thing so after do this so what i want to do i want to perform the addition of two numbers so what is this int sum equals to int number one plus int number two now i have done it now what is the next step to the output this output i want to write it into right cell so what you want to do so right cell activity So, in which cell you want to insert the value? Go back here. So, where you want to insert first of all? C C2, right? In C2, I want to insert this. Can we output this value here? Can you output like this? We should not hard code because if you give hard code, what will happen each and every time the value is going to be overwrite into the C2 cell itself. So these two should be dynamically we have to change it. So here before that one, so what is the value you want to push it here? In sum, right? In sum dot to string. Now this instead of c2 right this 2 should not be hard coded for that we create one integer counter value int counter so integer this let it always be an outside scope so by default i am just because my cell start with 2 right i have given default value is 2 now here what I want to do instead of this one right to I have to pass this so what is this int counter dot to string now so what is this here this always should be dynamically changed how this is going to be changed dynamically so we have to increment by one each and every time after finishing operation so what is the next step here here int counter equals to int counter plus one now default int counter is two so next thing what will happen this is going to be increment by one c3 will come here then increment by one c4 c5 c6 until my rows is going to be freezed out from the data table So very simple, I'm repeating again here. I'm reading the data, entire row. I'm just what I'm trying to say here. I'm want I just want to read the data from the row. How what is how we have to read the data row? I'm just for each data row with an activity. So by using that, I'm I can read the data from data row by row. So first time row will row zero will come. So in the row, I mean to say the row one here. So what will happen? I'm reading the data from the row. How we are going to read the data? So we have to row of column name when you have number one dot two string. So because why I am just converting here convert dot two in. So this is an integer variable. So make sure that this should have been converted into integer. The same thing I have read the value number two here and I'm just push it into number two variable and finally I have done it here like you know in sum. So this is addition of two numbers and just store it into one more variable. Finally, this is going to push it into one cell right so we have a desired activity called right cell concept so from the excel scope so i have been dragged and dropped here and this the i should not hard code the exact cell value because cell is keep on dynamically changing right c2 c3 c4 so obviously what will happen for that i have declared one counter variable here so by default i have sent to two since i just start c2 still 
So C2 had to start from C2 cell, right? So I just, this two, first of all, I have initialized and the two should be increment by one, plus one, plus one, until your rows is going to be complete from the data table. Now, if you could see here, after this, so what I'm doing, this right cell is activity, which is going to push it into which sheet? So I want to push it into where? In the sheet one, so where, in which cell you want to insert this? So this is a cell I have defined here, in the C2 by default. And what is the value you want to insert this? So sum of this two number, I want to insert this. And finally, I'm just incrementing by one. So why we are incrementing? The next row comes in the picture, right? By the time this should be become C3, so that I have been here, I have been having to say that I have incremented by one for the encounter variable. Let's quickly save this and run it. Mohan, Mohan, yeah. Mohan. Yes, yes. Uh, instead of running, can you please debug it? Sorry? Uh, instead of uh, running, can you debug it? Okay, I just stop this. Okay. Tell me, Bala. Yeah, instead of running, can you please debug it? Debug. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm just debugging it. Okay. okay. got started data range reading executing started okay now i am here fine so i'm just reading the value from the date read range so read range is done after read range right for each for execute started so in the locals here we have to see the all the values so what is the on the play how the values are changing also we have to see now what is the next step i'm step into i'm just coming inside of this one here we go so first step is executed right what is this int number so what is the number int number one this got injected into the first variable you guys are following me right um, yeah Mohan. Okay. Yeah, I'm just clicking next one. So, step into, here we go, integer number two, it was zero, now it has become one. Now I'm just, what I'm doing, I'm just going to, I'm step into the next step. Here we go. In sum, what is the in sum previously it was? Zero, now it has become two. I'm just moving to the step into C cell value. So cell is automatically coming to this. What is the cell here? Two. And what is the text I'm just going to print here? Two. Right? In sum, I'm just printing on top of it. Now, click step into. So what is this here? Int counter value two, right? It was now. Let us see what is the value. So int counter has become three now, right? Now, yeah. step next, step into. Before that one, let us see. Here is got printed. Clear? Yes. Now first row got printed. The same steps are going to be repeat again here. Now, step into. So 
it is keep on running. So for each row is nothing but what? It is especially designed for data table. So step into now number one. So what is the number one now? It has become two. So it is overridden. And what is the number two? Number two is also overridden. So previously in sum is what? Two. Just keep on overriding the existing value. Now become what is this? In sum, I want to be. So what is in sum now? This became four. Then step into in sum. I have done it. So what is the next step? I'm just writing into the particular cell. So what is the text here? I'm writing. Now see, cell is dynamically incremented by one, and it is become three three. And the value is four. I'm just going to insert into this, and I have done it. So I'm moving to this step. This is incremented. So what is in counter? It became four. Then before that, you just see this got printed here, right? Uh, yeah, that's enough. So this is how yeah. it is going to complete for entire rows. I'm just giving step over here. So this is the seventh one, incremented. So I'm just going to, this is the text is nothing but 14, I'm just printing, incremented by one. You able to hear me? Yes, more. Yes. Yes, yes more. Yes, more. Now I have printed the values here. See, it is in detail step. We have seen each and every step by step process. See, this is I have printed here. Along with this, I have printed the values in Excel sheet also. Any queries here? That's all about the Excel reading and writing concept. Any queries? Mohan, can you go to the project? Yeah, okay. Can you go to the... Uh, yeah. Right. 
so uh, we will see right workbook excel in upcoming session okay so where um, how what the differences between see right cell right range so we have to see the right range activity also right range activity is nothing but writing data into particular in excel sheet that we will see with an upcoming sessions and so um, any queries apart from this one so that we can wind up the session today that's it for variable chapter so we'll move on to the uh, next chapter is um uh, what i'm this next chapter is arguments i think so we are going to so pretty much covered for this now tomorrow we are going to talk about arguments and import namespace along with we will start the control flow so any queries so far Bala, I can go to you. Five minutes, five to ten minutes, so that you can handle this. Hmm. Ah, tomorrow can we have the class a little bit late? Is it fine for you? Could you please bit louder, Bala? I'm not hearing you. Yeah, tomorrow can you we have the class a little bit later? Later, right? I think that is yeah, actually you know I'll 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 let you know Bala. Tomorrow we have a class tomorrow and after tomorrow I'm just going to form form come okay. I'll at this weekend, right? So yeah, yeah that's what also I'm also glad. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, tomorrow I'll be on uh, I think early morning I uh, this time I will be on Bus, I guess. Okay, I've been on the way to my hometown. Okay. So, please let. Suppose if we have a classes, can we have around uh, nine or eight or nine? No. Suppose if we have means. Yeah, yeah, I have to tomorrow. Uh, I have to go to this uh, sports day function is there. I have to go there and straight away I have oh. to go to home. So we'll do okay, one thing. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the timings, right? If I have a free time in my home, right, hometown, I'll be connecting with you, or else I'll be connecting from. Uh, Monday. Okay, no problem. And uh, meanwhile, can you ask uh, Manuel to share the? I'm going to share with you all the last three days uh, uh, course. I mean, videos he's going to share with you guys. Fine. Okay, 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 okay. That's fine. Yeah. So, so yeah, on Saturday, Sundays we can just see and if anything we want, we can practice. You have to practice. You until or unless right? if you're not practicing, so yeah, yeah. It's no use for attending other class. Make sure that you um, practice. You get more uh, queries. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Vanya. One, one question I have regarding the bot. Uh, mm -hmm. See, um, I have created three bots. For example, I have uh, three different email folders. Each mm -hmm. bot is going to take care of a uh, mails coming in uh, in a folder. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, each three bot is going to perform a different task. Mm -hmm. uh, now I am scheduling a bot one. Uh, every five minutes. Okay. So every five minutes, it's go and check the um, uh, folder. If a new mail, any new mail come, take and perform the operation and shuts mm -hmm. down. Okay. And uh, I mean, for example, this first bot I've I've scheduled every uh, three minutes once, and the second bot I've scheduled every six minutes once. Third bot I've scheduled every ten minutes once. Here, mm -hmm. the time. Based on timing, I have scheduled the bots to go and perform the task. If there is no task, then it sets down. This here, yeah. can I create any dependency kind of factor? If bot one, for example, starts at third minute of the hour, and there is no mail, though immediately it shuts down. So that means the bot one has completed successfully. So can I uh, can I create here? If bot one completed successfully, immediately bot two has to start. Respective of the time, is there a way to set up a such uh, in the orchestrator no. or uh, in the yeah, studio? We don't have any other. We, we cannot create dependency between the bots here because we have scheduled right. So whenever mm. the time triggered, automatically bot is going to process that one. We cannot stop that bot. 
okay so for all the three things right for all the three things mm-hmm. you are using the same board okay mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. while running first board right if you schedule also what will happen just going to be wait mm-hmm. for some time if you overlapping between the times right so it is going okay. to wait until unless the previous board got released but here okay. you no know, we are creating in different different time schedule right so no problem mm-hmm. we can create it but the problem is we cannot uh, finalize say part one got completely uh, completed or not that we have to Depend. handle all the code only so in the ui path code. code only we have to handle so make sure that test example the bot one it is going to read the data from the first inbox mm-hmm. okay that okay. means that yeah. you know some count right right in the particular okay. path you, you may know like for i mean you mean to say that you are re- reading the, all the data from this, like example attachments you have some attachments reading from the respective mails so mm-hmm. this attachment you are going to push it into particular physical path So what is okay. the second part? Uh, second bot has to do it is kick start the bot. Bot it is going to fetch whether do we have data in the particular location or not. If it is data in the particular location only bot two has oh. to perform. Or else we can bot is we can stop the bot two also right. The same thing you can do it for the th- third bot also. But here I cannot we cannot maintain the dependency between the bots here. Okay. Is there uh, that all are individual executions. Morgan. Yeah, Bala. Yeah, whether we can set a flag right and add up the bot execution support is flag one. Then the bot uh, next uh, and the data. If suppose attachment is there in the location, we can start the next activity in the bot right without uh, scheduling. Without scheduling. Yeah, yeah. in the same bot itself, we can do it all these three operations. So uh, yeah, so. And one more thing, you spoke about that the uh, UI path code, right? So you you will be writing on .dot net, right? A .dot net or another environment, any other environment? .dot net only. We are writing using .dot net. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, uh, UI path is understanding C sharp or VB .dot net. So other uh, there is both. You just going to understand VB .dot net or VB all the code which is going to understand. Even Java oh. also is going to understand. Oh, okay, fine. Okay. And uh, one more you? thing, Morgan. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Ah, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Bala. Yeah. So, is it possible to communicate? Is it is not possible. I, I, I'm not sure. Is it possible to communication happen between two bots, or uh, each bot will run independently? No, no, no. I'm not getting Bala. Sorry. No. Is suppose, uh, suppose I am creating two bots. Okay. And okay. it's running parallelly at the two time. Is is there uh, whether these two bots can be communicated within each other? Are there no parallel execution? So we so far we didn't try parallel execution on the particular bot. Here bot is okay. bot one is running. It is separate transaction. Bot is also separate transaction. Here the parallel execution so so far we didn't run it. <clears throat> okay, okay. So so at the time only one bot can run on one system, right? Parallel. Yes. Only one bot can run on one machine. Okay, 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 okay. Now I am speaking about yeah. the two servers. Two it servers. Is, uh, new concept came. I heard that it is like you no know, scheduling from the UI path itself. So we you don't need to schedule from the orchestrator. That uh, okay. If I found, I'm just going to that. Uh, I'll I'll go through that one, and I'll come back to you. Okay. So how we can do scheduling dynamically, right? Here is everything is if you are on if you are scheduling from uh, orchestrator, it is it is like a static scheduling. But I want to schedule it dynamically as you required, right? So one bot one is completed, then only I have to start the bot two. Got it? So this one they have introduced one new concept in 2018. So let me hmm. check that one and I'll get back to you in that. But I'm not no, sure. That case we that. need that case we need one person to to kickstart the bot right dynamically. Dynamically. Uh, then, scheduling. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, but scheduling. scheduling. But again, uh, uh, the, uh, it should be scheduled by person, right? Human, right? No, no. That everything we are going to write it in the code itself. Code. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, in the UI path, from UI path. This is what I heard. Okay. But I'm not okay. sure. We have to test that one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Fine. Fine, guys. I think that's it for yeah. today. Have a good day. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.